talking with. Seaweed! Seaweed's about to enter the water. It looks, it looks beautiful, guys. Look at this. Look at this water. Look how clear this water is. We have our whole family with us. They're all gonna catch their own lobsters. Flat as can be, the best condition for diving. The visibility is, basically you can catch lobsters without a mask. So when you're diving, you're a shallow water diver, you wanna look for the white sand and then the dark patch. See the, that dark patch? So the white sand meets the dark patch and then in those ledges, ledges of, of grass, you dive down, go underneath those ledges and you're gonna see all the lobsters. All right, I gotta get in the water, guys. I'm out of here. All right, getting started. Foggy mass, old, foggy, dirty mass. It's been years. We're gonna, not years, it's been months. We're gonna shake off the rust. Straight, listen. Saliva. Saliva, get that in the lens, rub it in. Nothing better than your saliva. Look, David, you want to get your feet done? Rinse it off in the salt water. And we're ready to go, baby. We're gonna go. We're gonna go get it done now. Follow me. Nothing to see here. Just typical seaweed sticking his hand in holes where he shouldn't with an eel popping out on the other side. You would think I'd learned my lesson, but right after, here I am sticking my hand in another hole to pull a lobster that was way, way, way in the back. I don't do this for views or likes. I love mother nature. I love the ocean. I'm always trying to clean up the ocean. Any bags we see, garbage, bottles. This is the third bottle that I pulled off of the patches that I was diving. My beautiful blonde bombshell sister with the assist. Thank you, Dulce. If it's crystal clear and flat calm like it was on this trip, it's a lot easier to find the spots. You'll see the white patch. Uh, I'm sorry, you'll see the white sand meet a dark black grass patch, and that's where you want to dive in and check those ledges. But if you can't see them, just have someone throw your rope, get at least 12 feet behind those propellers, and have them tow you around. Tow you around, and even if it's a little dark and murky, you can even let go of the rope whenever anything looks interesting, and just take a coast, get to the bottom, and take a peek in, look for those antennas. So have someone tow you with a rope if it's not crystal clear and you can't see them from the top. So we have over here, Captain Junior. Put me on the spot, Captain Junior. I wanna go that way. Here's our next door neighbor who said, move over whippersnappers, let me show you how it's done. And actually goes down and impresses us with a nice catch. Rob Roy, you still got it, buddy. You the man. Here you see a rock pile coming to frame. And what do you see me call for? My more slender, custom-built acrylic Florida lobster net. Florida 
lobster nets uh, made by Brooke Christ. Brooke Christ is the fiance of, as you guys know, Land Shark Outdoors, Victor Huben. Um, Victor's a, a, a guy that I met. He was a, one of the younger kids fishing the shark fishing tournaments back, I believe, in like 2003. And I always respected him. Uh, we would compete against each other. I always respected him because a lot of these guys were a lot of drama and complaining if they lost or if you caught a bigger shark. And he was always, you know, real humble, caught big sharks, always placed in the tournaments, and we actually became buddies. But that's how I found out about their nets, following Land Shark Outdoors, in contact with uh, Victor. And his fiance, Brooke Rice, I guess made these herself, and they are amazing. You're gonna see in this clip. Uh, they're amazing for when you get into those rock piles. When you're in the rock piles and you have this big net, this mesh gets caught up in the rocks, it gets caught up on your, your lobster gauge. Look, hitting the side, hitting the chandeliers, it'll get caught on your lobster gauge. And a lot of people will tell you that these things, they get caught up on everything. But with this net that my friends made, it's nice, small, compact, you keep it on your side while you're swimming. And in those, lo in those rocks, when you have a small little pocket, a smaller rock, it's perfect to just whack those little lobsters, put it behind the rock, and they shoot right in. Really, really good tool I highly recommend it I'm gonna post the link in this video and it is what is it again babe Florida lobster nets.com Florida lobster nets by Brooke Christ you'll see the link in the um, in the YouTube bio This is what I like most about Victor and Brooks Nets. You get those lobsters out of your mesh so easily. You don't have to waste three minutes untangling every lobster. Here's Dante and his tia Canny Girl counting all of our lobsters to make sure that we're not over our limit. I have heard horror stories about being one lobster over the limit or just a hair too short. You don't want to go through any problems, especially with all these kids on the boat. So be on top of your lobster count and measure every lobster you put on that boat. Anytime you have several kids on several different boats for mini season, it's highly recommended to bring a big bag of silver sides or some form of bait fish. So you could jump in those shallow patch reefs and have the entire family on the water feeding these Bermuda chubs, yellowtails, and beautiful reef fish. This is the halftime show, guys. Back to the lobster action shortly.
And for the start of the second half, we take you back to Seaweed's Lobster Infested Honey Hole. Here's a cool one. One in the hand and one in the net. I positioned my net into a closed off corner of the ledge to where they can't escape. And then I bring my tickle stick around the other end. I bring my tickle stick around the other end and I either use my tickle stick or sometimes I even reach my arm to touch the back of that hole and shoot all those lobsters, boom, right into my net. And in this clip, you'll see them all shoot in and I should really just get one at a time so it doesn't become a big cluster and a mess. But I'm, I'm a kid at heart, so I love seeing five lobsters in my net. On this one, they all shoot in and all you can do when you have that many lobsters in your net, which is a great thing. Unfortunately, some people go out, they only get about four or five lobsters on their whole trip is when they all shoot in, there's no real method to hold five lobsters in this little net. All I like to do is bring it into my body and bear hug it like this and hold all those lobsters and their claws on my chest. And come up for air and then slowly uh, pull them out of my net, call over a friend to help me out. And that's how you do it. Position your net, Shoo them into the net and bear hug it from seaweed. And this is ticket talking mother for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it. And this is ticket talking mother for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it. Hold him up, hold him up. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, four for one. <sighs> bro, they're everywhere, bro. Always stay relaxed when free diving. Here I am not taking my own advice. With one lobster in hand, I try tickling out two other ones and I end up getting none of them. Tickle out lobsters. And I went back up, caught my breath, and I go down and you'll see me. There'll be some funny parts where I'm giving a peace sign or probably too close to the lens, trying to look at the lens, telling you, Luke, I'm about to get him, baby. And then I just go in, hopefully it got it. There may be some silt from the sand from the GoPro sitting on the bottom, but I went to the bottom and tickled out those lobsters 
while my GoPro sat all alone in the sand. Here's my buddy Oscar clowning around with a camera while catching a lobster and giving us a nice celebratory rise to the surface. <laughs> I love it! The star! The star! Yes, sir! Yo, we're gonna live it out here. Look at this, look at this. Talk about loaded. I love it. <laughs> Lastly, before I head off into the kitchen, how to measure your Florida lobster. You need to hook your gauge into the horns of the lobster and reach it back towards the tail. It should touch nothing but head, exactly three inches or bigger. If it touches the tail, he's too short. Mini season, 20, 21. Start melting the butter. Hey, so now coming to you from Miami Springs, Florida, this is the 2021 <clears throat> mini season draft. You have representing the Bustamante clan, Cindy. You have representing the Carlin clan, Gregory. You have representing the Ortiz clan, Julio. I'm gonna hold it down for all my family that picked lobsters, that got lobsters this season. Here's another clip I wanted to play out to the end because I thought the content was great but I had to shorten it so that I could get into the cooking. It looked like a ton of lobsters. We caught over 200 lobsters during this mini season, but it was a lot of divers with big families. So we portioned them out. And if, again, if anybody's gonna give me a hard time, like, oh, you didn't need that many lobsters. You don't know what you're talking about. We have large families. It was a lot of divers. And for us divers, these are our two days to get as many as we can, put some tails in the fridge, before all those lobster traps are all over the place. And, you know, honestly, I don't even go after lobsters too many times after mini season. So again, you know, ease off. This is our opportunity to get our lobster tails, okay? So now that I have them here at the house, we are going to show you how to clean them and get them ready for cooking. So here you have some, you have some that already rang the tails, but here's a full Florida spiny lobster. I'm gonna take you from A to Z. So you have your lobster tail, we're gonna ring this tail. I'm gonna go by hand because my hands are all uh, full of callus and all scratched up from diving. So it doesn't hurt me much to grab a, a lobster's head, but if, you, if it's hurting you, just grab a, a little rag, a little towel or some gloves, throw on some gloves. And uh, so ring the tail, hold onto that head, hold the tail, and you're gonna stick your index finger in this hole, start spreading that meat from the head because there's, there's a lot of juicy meat that'll stay stuck in the head if you just spin the tail. So I've released that juicy meat that's inside that head, and now I'm gonna give it a simple spin. There we go. Lobster tail is free. We're gonna flip it upside down. This is the poop shoot. So to get this lobster nice and clean, we are gonna break off one of our tentacles now. Here we go, break this off at the base. We have our tentacle, or our lobster antenna if you wanna call it. Discard, I'm gonna discard of the head some people. Oh, actually no, we're not discarding of the head. I'm gonna leave this here to the side for later. We're gonna insert into the poop chute and spin. 
So here I go, I'm spinning one, two, three, four, and out. And out goes the poop chute. So right here, you see this base of the antenna? It's pretty big, right? If this were a, lops, uh, a crab claw, you're definitely gonna wanna get in there and eat some of that. So I'm gonna cut off this, the thinner side of the antenna right here. Cut that off. Pull out the big meat cleaver to get down to the base over here. Cause I'm gonna open this up and that's gonna be our dish. So here we go, aim and fire. Aim, fire, aim, fire. All right, we've got our, our base of our tentacles off, of our antennas off. We're gonna get our scissors, cut this open. Get that cut open. Just like if it was a snow crab claw. <laughs> Look at that. There you have it. That's how you fully clean a lobster. And on this dish, this is the meat that we're saving that is usually discarded. Usually they'll wring that tail and just come right to the bucket and discard all that meat. But not for this dish, we're gonna use those. Ingredient number one, six cloves of fresh garlic, thinly sliced. A little drizzle of olive oil. Our lobster antenna, face down, face down, face down. Olive oil, garlic, and our lobster antennas face down. This is gonna be a dish for Dante Kane, and he's gonna eat it with a chopstick. We kept it real simple, let the lobster shine out. Olive oil and garlic and a little salt and black pepper. So I'm gonna kick it up another notch with some chili oil. Dante, do you want some chili oil on yours? I'm good, okay. <laughs> he doesn't want the heat, he doesn't want the smoke, yeah? Not this struggling, but I'll show you how it's done with some finesse. Okay. Remember, this is this is in essence peasant food because the peasants only get this meat. But I'll be a peasant. If this is my meal, I'll be the peasant. Mmm, that's really good. Mmm, that's a whole bite of lobster. Delicious. Really, really yummy. No more throwing away the antennas, guys. On to our next dish, which is a medium-sized appetizer, and it has French bread in it. So my sous chef, Dante, will you do the honors of slicing some French bread up for us, buddy? Oh, yeah. There you go. Perfect. Watch your fingers. French baguette, a few slices, and this is gonna go right into the oven at 375 degrees. We're gonna crisp that up. And then this concoction, I didn't tell you what I put in it because it's a secret, but it's a cilantro, has avocado, aioli. And it's gonna go on the next dish. Set that aside, and here we have a small little pot where we're gonna, I put half margarine and half butter. <laughs> we can go laugh, people get seasick. What I see. We're on medium, medium heat so we don't brown and burn our butter. Split that tail. 
I think this is gonna be the best lobster tail we've ever had. Poached in butter. And our poached lobster is done. So we're coming out of that butter. And we're gonna plate. Mmm. Bring her over here. Dante, will you be a taste tester? Oh yeah. And now for my taste tester on our poached in butter lobster tail. Dante Kane, do the honors, bud. Give it a little. With some lime on it. Mmm. This was poached and butter. We just added a little bit of black pepper. And now Dante's doing the honors of squeezing some lime on it. Let's get that out of the way. How's that? <laughs> really good, right? Ooh, delish. Guys, that's a lobster tail poached in butter with black pepper, cilantro as a garnish, and some lime. Look, he's going in for a second bite. We're keeping some of the dishes simple this time because some of those fancy dishes we've made for you people are like, man, I'll never know those ingredients and I'll never cook that. our toasted French baguette, our cilantro garlic avocado aioli, a little bit there, a little bit here, this poached lobster, oh, and butter, one piece here, one piece there, I like tomato, Dante doesn't like tomato, but I'm going to put a piece of tomato. Some bacon for Dante's, a little bacon for mine, cilantro, cilantro, and there you have it, lobster baguette. Over 200 lobsters for mini season, but guess who's really gonna drop the hammer? All the commercial lobster boats. The Miss Jean out of Key Largo, David Sands and the, and the Sands brothers out of Key Largo. Everybody's gonna go out in full pursuit of getting their quotas for lobsters. So we go out and get them fresh, and so do the commercial guys, but only they charge $45 a pound. So learn how to dive, guys. Take pointers from my video and get out there and get you some lobsters next mini season. That's all for this episode of Sharking with Seaweed. Take care and have a good one. Sharking with.